Sadly, because of the increase in COVID numbers and cases, we've decided that we're going to broadcast and uh, create a worship experience for you only online today and next week. And then we'll keep an eye on things and uh, see what we need to do next. It was a hard decision when we said, no, we really need to close our doors again because I love seeing you and I know that uh, we've enjoyed uh, waving across the room and sharing virtual hugs. Um, but today we can do the same kind of thing just a little bit further apart. So would you take a moment and just greet those who are on the screen with you? Maybe type in, hey, good to see you or welcome or happy Sunday morning or some word of praise or something like that. Hopefully it won't be too long before we can be together again, but right now the call in our nation and certainly in our county and our region is to be safe. It's to wear a mask, to keep our distance, and to uh, once and for all hopefully suppress this virus so we can get back to our new normal. But thank you so much for joining with us. As we begin our time together, would you bow your hearts and your heads wherever you are and pray with me? Let's pray. Lord, even though the numbers continue to rise, you're still in control. Even though our world is in turmoil, you're still working out your plan. Even though we're fighting with sin and issues of injustice, you're still with us, encouraging us forward, encouraging us to do what's right and to give our lives to see your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit knows no boundaries, that there's nowhere that he can't go, no room that he can't fill, no life that he can't change. And so, Jesus, we ask that in these moments of worship together, that your Holy Spirit would come and meet with us, would come and fill us, would come and change us. Lord, we invite you this morning to do a work in our hearts. And we ask and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Mike, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for coming out. And would you lead us in our first worship today? And friends, as Mike leads us, feel free to sing as loud and as off-key as you want at home. Absolutely. Good morning, church. Hope you guys are doing well. We're going to open with a song today that was actually written in the 60s and uh, became somewhat of an anthem of Christian unity in the civil rights movement. And uh, you probably, you may know this song, but um, what I really love about this song is it centers on Jesus Christ as our source of healing and strength. Amen. Let's sing together. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know. We are Christians by our love. Sing with me. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know. We are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. All praise to the Father from whom all things 
has come, and all praise to Christ Jesus, His only Son, and all praise to the Spirit who makes us one, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love, and they'll know. Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Mike. There is an advantage I've determined about not having a congregation here. I can sing as loud as I want behind my mask. <laughs> so, uh, sorry about that. Maybe it's the right thing to do. Friends, today we're starting a new message series called Check Your Engine. And the idea behind this series is that in all this turmoil, in all the struggle, in all the challenges, in all the adjustments... It is absolutely essential that we take some time to check the state of our heart. Because if our heart is off, if our heart is wrong, then we're going to move in the wrong direction. And so over the next few weeks, Adamir today and myself and some others over the next few weeks are going to talk about what it means to check the internal engine of our hearts. A couple of weeks ago, I was involved in an event that was rather stressful for me. There were lots of moving pieces, lots of things that I needed to manage and to lead and to get through and to speak into in real time. And it was, I guess, quite a stressful time, although everything's been stressful realized recently. We just kind of run with it. But, but I noticed in the midst of my stress on my, my watch... There was this little flashing symbol that caught my eye and this pulsing sound behind the watch that was hitting my wrist. And what this light said was simply, breathe. And I'm like, just stop making that noise because I've got to do things right now. I don't want to breathe. <laughs> but, but it kept going on and it kept distracting me and it kept annoying me. It said, breathe, breathe, breathe. Went on for about 30 seconds, then it silenced. Two minutes later, in the midst of all my stress and my, my, my worry and my leading and all that kind of stuff, it started to go again. It said, breathe, breathe, breathe. I'm like, please, just stop. Give it a break. You're creating more stress. And so after the event, I got home and tried to fix my watch, wondering what had gone on, that this breathe command had been triggered twice in about five minutes. And as I was doing some research, I found out that my watch, which is taking my heart rate, determined that my heart rate was such that it needed to remind me to chill and breathe. Chill and breathe. Relax and breathe. Relax and breathe. There was obviously something going on in me that created more anxiety than I realized Breathe, breathe, breathe. Over the next few weeks, we want to talk about what it would look like if our spiritual heart, our soul, the center of all that we are, had some kind of warning detection on it. That said, time out. Check your heart. What's your peace level? What's your joy level? What's your anxiety level? These watches can be really helpful in saying, hey, there's something that you need to pay attention to. But, but the scriptures provide a similar test to us as we guide and protect and nurture a heart. So today, we're going to talk about what it means to check our engine, to check our heart. And so as we begin this series, 
I would invite you to close your eyes, wherever you are, to bow your head and to breathe. Are you doing it? I mean, I, I can't see. This is the, you know, an honesty thing. But as your eyes are closed and as you're taking some deep breaths, hear these words of Scripture as I lead us into a time of prayer. I look up to the mountains. Where does my strength come from? My strength comes from God who made heaven and earth and the mountains. He won't let me stumble. My guardian God won't fall asleep. Not on your life. Israel's guardian will never doze or sleep. God is your guardian. Right at your side to protect you. Shielding you from sunstroke, sheltering you from moonstroke. God guards you from every evil. He guards your very life. He guards you when you leave. And he guards you when you return. He guards you now. And he guards you always. Lord, in this world of trouble and turmoil and trauma, in this world where we hurt and where we grieve and where we're pained, In this world of uncertainty and fragility and worry, we pause and we breathe and we acknowledge Jesus that you are in control. You know what it's going to take to suppress this virus. You know what it's going to take for us to return to a new normal. You know what it's going to take for us to abolish racism. You know what it's going to take for justice to flow like a river. You know what it's going to take for righteousness to flow like a never ending stream. So, Lord, help us to breathe in you help us to trust you help us to sit before you help us to act with you so that your kingdom can come on earth as it is in heaven Lord, your word says that you are an ever-present help in times of trouble. Jesus, would you be ever-present to all those that are in trouble? Heal the sick. Feed the hungry. 
clothe the naked. Meet the vulnerable. Love the hurting. Bring peace to the worrying. And Jesus, help us to focus our attention on you. Our guardian God who protects us and loves us and provides for us. Lord, as we come into right relationship with you, help us to come into right relationship with this world. Help us to be your hands and feet. May your heart beat be our heart beat as we love this hurting world. Lord, I pray for my friends who are watching online. I pray that your peace would come through their screens. I pray that your peace would flood their homes. I pray that your peace would overwhelm their hearts. And we ask and we pray. In the powerful name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Let me be filled with kindness and compassion for the one. For humanity, increase my love. So help me to love with open arms like you do. A love that erases all the lies and sees the truth. They would see you even in just a smile. They would feel the Father's love. For how He loves from the homeless to the famous, and it's me. You formed us and you made us carefully. Cause in the end, we're all your children. So help me to love with open arms like you do. A love that erases all the lines and sees the truth. Oh, that when they look in my eyes, they would see you. Even in just a smile, they will feel the Father's love. Let all my life tell who you are. And the wonders of your never-ending love. Let all my life tell of who you are. Such a good father. Let all my life tell of who you are. It's our prayer today. And the wonders of your never ending love. Oh Lord, let all my life tell of who you are. You're wonderful. And such a good father, 
You're wonderful and such a good father. So help me to love with open arms like you do. A love that erases all the light and sees the truth. Oh, that when they look in my eyes, they would see you. Even in just a smile, they would feel the Father's love. Even in just a smile, they would feel the Father's love. Dear God, thank you so much for everything. Thank you for the stars and the sun and the hair on my head. Thank you for the people that I know and I don't know. Thank you for all the creatures on this planet and thank you for the ability to get to know you every day by choice. Uh, Lord, I just pray that our time together is deep in your love and we walk away here knowing a little bit more about you than we did yesterday. It's in your wonderful name that we pray. Amen. All right, good morning, everyone. Clearly, I'm not Andy, but when he asked me to come in and speak this weekend, uh, to be quite honest with you guys, I wasn't quite sure what direction to go with this. When we're talking about checking our hearts, I'm thinking to myself, all right, well, I can't see it. And I think that's one of the hardest things for us to do is to check in, really dive deep about something we can't see. Yeah, I mean, we feel our hearts in the physical sense. Uh, we can read biology textbooks and uh, talk to our doctor. Uh, some of you guys might have high blood pressure, or cholesterol, right? You know how those conversations go. But for the deeper part of our hearts, how we treat each other, where the Holy Spirit dwells, that's difficult. Because we can't see it, and I can't point to you and say, ah, see that right there? You got Holy Spirit more in you. But I actually believe that as we train ourselves and we start to reflect more, we can. We can start to notice Christ in us. We do notice the Holy Spirit being an outward expression. But the only way that we start to do that is when we recognize the consequences of what happens if we don't. Right? Just like anything else in life. If we don't understand what we have to risk, we're not gonna step out in faith. Uh, I was listening to this podcast and uh, I'm a sucker for podcasts all, all the time. I think it's a way to uh, engage with someone with no one in the room <laughs> or for long car rides, but I'm listening to this podcast and it's this scientist and, and he's talking about the space shuttles and it's all stuff that's way above my head. I, I don't really understand it. And they're talking about the payloads and, and when it jettisons and uh, when their equipment drops off into the ocean. And they're talking about all the calculations that they end up doing just to figure out where exactly it's going to fall. Can I tell you guys something as Christians? If we are just a little bit off on what we're putting into our hearts and where we're building our foundation, we are going to miss the mark. Uh, the scientists had this quote, and it, it made me laugh, but it, it was really simple. Uh, the, the guy interviewing them asked, what, what happens if you're off? And the guy said this, um, they miss it, and it becomes way harder than you'd plan. Simple, right? They miss it, and it becomes way harder than you plan. My biggest fear as a Christian is that I miss it. That I'm not sure that I'm living totally in line with Christ and I am showing someone else that I'm missing it as well. Uh, we, we don't have to look any further than our creation story to see how deceitful and off the heart can be. And, and that's, 
that's where we start, right? We start with a great feeling. So why are we surprised that we're any different? Uh, fun fact, King James Version of the Bible, it mentions heart 800 times. I think it's actually over 800, but 800. Something repeated that much has to be something we, we pay attention to. Uh, there's a verse from Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Now, we don't like to talk about the fact that we may not be inherently good. Whether that's in church, with our friends, whatever it may be, we love to seek the good in people, and there's a time and place for that. But when it comes to introspection and actually looking at your shortcomings, seeing where your heart lies, you have to start with a basis that you are not perfect. Right? If you go to a therapy session, expecting that you were just going to tell the therapist how good you are, you're not going to get the same value out of it. And, and that's what we're called to do here as Christians. We're called to re-examine our hearts, actually check it in an honest and genuine way. Um, when I was a freshman in high school, I, the cool spot to hang out was the cafeteria, right? And you go and you get hang out by these super long rectangular tables and everyone's hanging out and you're talking and probably talking more than you're eating and trying to rush through and everything like that. And I'll, I'll never forget, we were sitting down having a conversation and I had just gone to youth group the day prior and we're talking about it. And he's asking me like, oh, why do you go to youth? Uh, why is it important? And then he asked me a pivotal question. And the question was, what is the point of being a Christian if you like all the same things I like? And that's a deeper question because at first I was just like, yeah, we're allowed to have similar interests. Of course, we're friends. But the heart of that question was, but if you value the same things that I do, what is the difference? If I can't see what you value, what is important, what holds your heart, then there is no difference between you who claim Christ and someone else. And man, that hit me. Because that was so important. Here's this guy asking me a more serious question than I had at church. I needed to make sure the values and things that I stored in my heart aligned with the gospel. That the value was there. Because when I made sure that the values I kept were in line with the gospel, people didn't ask that question. They saw it. It became an expression. And so as we dive in and we start to talk about ways we can check our hearts, I want us all to understand how serious it is if we don't. Because as Christians, there is a responsibility. We don't like to mention the responsibility part either. But people watch. Because all the values that we, we hold in Christ, man, that's what the world wants more than anything else. They crave it. They crave generosity, love, kindness, peace. And here we are waving a flag saying, I am an ambassador of those things. And if we're going to claim that, but not have those values in our heart, and we don't constantly check ourselves, not only do we lead ourselves astray, we lead others. And just like that rocket, we'll be miles off course. Um, so one of the first questions that I have, 
and it, it's a simple one, um, is, well, first let me read a verse because I think that's the most important. I, this comes from Proverbs 4, 23. It's, it's a well-known one. Keep your heart with all the vigilance, sorry, for from it flow the spring of life, which is just a call of how important this process is. Checking your heart isn't something that you naturally do. You have to be vigilant about it consistently and constantly. And you guys might be asking, like, all right, I understand that I should be checking out my heart. I should have moments of actually looking inside. So what do I do now? How do I go about this process of figuring it out? And truthfully, uh, within the series, Andy and I are going to try and talk through all that because it's lengthy. It's a lot. <laughs> but I do think there are questions you could start with. Uh, first question, when was the last time I expressed outwardly sincere kindness, patience, and charity? I'll read that again. When was the last time I expressed outwardly sincere kindness, patience, and charity. It's a very, very simple question. But on our walk in, on this planet, we're called to express the fruits of the Spirit, right? I, a well-known one is in Galatians, of course, when they're going through the fruits of the Spirit, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And I'm sure if I asked you, all right, which one of these do you struggle with the most? You probably know a few right off the bat. And if you're married, your spouse probably knows more than a few right off the bat for you. And not saying that we're going to be perfect with these things. But when we're struggling in a direct area in the fruit of the spirit, that's a warning signal for our heart. When we sit there and think about that, uh, for example, me, the, the other day, my dog, Louie, we got a brand new little puppy. And, well, he's not brand new, he's six months. But uh, he has this crazy thing about every time he sees people, he has to pee. And not outside, inside. And I found myself getting just frustrated. <laughs> And I was taking that frustration in that moment with just my dog. And we were going to leave and go shopping with my brother. And I found for the first 10 minutes of that car ride, I stayed in that, in just that frustration from a lack of patience with this animal. And that's just a small thing. And if we're honest with ourselves, those small things stack up. Whether it's self-control, being kind, gentleness, and each one of those things, I guarantee you, if you're human, these moments become habits. And you're not going to jump back to fixing it unless you have a real moment with Christ to examine what's going on. And... I do want to make a distinction. There is a difference between when's the last thing I did something nice versus when is the last thing I acted out for Christ? That's a very, very different question, right? I can do something nice by letting someone borrow my pencil. Cool, fine and dandy. It is different to give someone your pencil and genuinely ask how they're doing because you love them. So the question becomes, when was the last time the fruits of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, moved you to act, not just act? And that might be a little bit longer. Or maybe it was yesterday, 
right? There's some of you guys, that's amazing. But when I'm honest about myself, I realize that sometimes I'm doing stuff, going through the motion, even if I'm living out publicly the fruits of the Spirit, that maybe Christ isn't in that action. It's a habitual action instead. And that's a warning light, too. Uh, second thing. Am I experiencing a hardened heart? Do I have difficulty listening with compassion? For me, and I, I don't mind being personal or anything like that, I am one of those people that immediately when something happens, I, I can put up walls, right? And the problem about walls is they don't let people in. And I would tell you this, those scars, those wounds have power over you. They dictate your time, your energy, your, your motivation to be in connection with one another because you're here holding on to a, a little bit of hate, anger, and pain. And I'm not saying that as a Christian, or if you want to be a good person or whatever it is, that forgiveness comes like that. And it happens quickly and we can just move on and someone says, I'm sorry, and you're okay. I, I wish that was the case, but it's not. I wish for every single instance of pain in your life, I could sit there and say, someone will come to you and say, I am sorry. But I would be lying to you. You see, when we believe that things can be fixed with three little words, it's one of two things. If we think everything can be fixed with I am sorry, it is either it wasn't as big of a deal as it was, right? We made a, a much ado about nothing. Or if everything was fixed with I'm sorry, then honestly it's coming from a little bit of an egotistical place. Because I'm sorry does not change the pain that you felt. I'm sorry is the start of a conversation. I'm sorry is a way to start to understand someone else. But if you're sitting here waiting for I'm sorry, the expectation of I'm sorry, you will carry that in your heart until the end of time. And that hurt and pain can start to expand to other areas in your life. It can expand to other people. Sometimes it expands to other people that don't look like you and that mixes with the other issues of hardening your heart. And I don't think I have to tell you guys about what happens when the combination happens. There comes a time where everyone has to get to the point that they realize the process of reconciliation begins with understanding the value each other has in Christ. It's not just about the I am sorry's. That true forgiveness and moving forward begins with me seeing, hey, you're God's child too. And once I start to have that conversation, my heart heals. And then my capacity to have love flow from that expands. But that's not going to happen unless we start with the understanding of the value we have in God's eyes. Not just our own value. And that, that can be a little bit difficult to swallow because we just say, I've been wronged. I deserve this. This is justified. Can I tell you guys a secret? That's not our role. 
as much as we want it to be, we're not here to judge one another. We are here to be messengers of Christ and love in every instance we can. We're not here to say, you owe me this. And if we decided that true reconciliation with Christ as a foundation, starting understanding one another, understanding the value that God places on one another, how much better would this world be? Our hearts would be full because there wouldn't be a moment in time when that wasn't expressed to us. That's what I want. And I think that's what everyone wants. But we have to be honest about the wounds that we have and what we're carrying. We have to be honest about the fact that our hearts are hard. And there are certain topics we don't want to get into or people we don't want to communicate with. We have to go and check ourselves and look back at how are we expressing Christ in our lives? Are there areas that we're struggling with that we don't find to be as easy for us? And again, we're not looking for perfection, but if we don't check our hearts, we'll miss it. We'll miss the point. And we'll be so far off the mark that you'll bring your own brothers and sisters around with you. And that, that's a responsibility in weight. That should, if anything, make us want to check our hearts more often. I, I know it's difficult. I do. But I can't stress how important it is. One last question for you guys. And it's kind of a solution too. When was the last time I took care of my heart and fed it? Am I feeding the Holy Spirit that dwells within me? Are you being fed? Are you actively searching to engage with God? Not just on Sundays or during a service or that one Bible study, but in your daily life, in your routines, is it built in? Because part of reflection is asking the Holy Spirit to enter in. Part of reflection is recognizing your shortcomings and asking forgiveness from God first. Part of reflection is understanding how welcoming and warm Christ is. And that he wants you there too. And as we go through this process and we're in communication with God, as we're etching the words of his scripture onto our heart, we start to change. We realign ourselves. And we need that realignment more than ever. Uh, a lot of times I get questions and people are asking me, hey, so wh what can I do? Right? It, it could be about leading ministry. It could be about uh, race. It could be whatever, fill in the blank. And I'll ask, what can I do? What's the next step? The simplest answer is check your heart. You have to check your heart. Because if I give you steps, if someone tells you what to do next, and it is not coming from the Holy Spirit, but a desire just to be a part of something, it helps no one. Because then you'll have people who say, what's the the difference. What's the difference? They value the same things. 
I don't have to pay attention to them. I don't have to pay attention to uh, what they're protesting or anything like that. They value the same things, they'll change their minds. If you want lasting change in anything that you do, it has to come from a foundation that is bigger than yourself. And the way you get that is being in communion with Christ. That's the honest truth of it. And from that, your actions flow. You can't work backwards on this. Listen, I, at the bottom of my heart, I really do wish that this time was a different time. I wish we could fast forward years into the future. We're living in paradise and it's grand. But church, heaven's not here yet. And having the expectation that we can work through things without God being involved is foolish. It's foolish on both sides of whatever argument you want. Because from God comes a heart that is willing to serve, willing to love, and willing to understand. And your heart won't be in the right place until you check it. Uh, when I was buying my, my first car, uh, the guy there tried to sell me on everything and everything like that. He got close, uh, but he did say one thing, and it was as he was telling me all, all the maintenance and, and everything for um, this car, which was overwhelming. It's my first car, and I'm, I'm learning about like, oh, the timing belt, my brake pads, all of this stuff. Like I had a car, but it was it was beat up, so I wasn't taking care of it. And I get this car, and I get this big manual of everything. And the guy could tell that I was overwhelmed. And he looked at me and said, I know it's a lot, but you're responsible for it. And it will save you so much time and money and heartache in the long run. And this is a guy talking about a car. And honestly, I, he was talking about so much more in that moment. We do have a book. We have a manual of all sorts. That we are able to constantly go back to, to check on. But if we're not doing the maintenance in our heart that it's telling us to do, We're driving right into heartache, right into pain, frustration, anger, deceit, selfishness. You name it, you're driving straight into it. We have to do the maintenance consistently and constantly. Or we'll miss it. What would today look like? if we were honest about it, if we checked our hearts. Think about how conversations would came if we were coming with compassion instead of a hardened heart. Think about what forgiveness would look like if it came from, hey, I just want to understand, but I understand that you are loved first. That would turn the world on its head. Over the last few weeks, Everyone has been talking about racism. Guys, racism is a heart issue. Don't, don't get it twisted on and believe that it is anything else. Of course, there are policies and procedures and we can do those. But if you're not engaging in your heart, if you are not being honest about what is going on inside, then not only will it not get better now, we will breed children that repeat the same mistakes. Because again, remember, as a Christian, not only do we become off, we bring others around us with us. 
if we all know that Christ is the thing the world needs most, truthfully, we can show it to them. But we have to be honest if Christ is actually involved in our own lives first, in a real way. Uh, there's this verse that I think is great. It's uh, Jeremiah 29, 13. It says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. That first part, you will seek me and find me, is a promise. Right? And we, and we don't see it as a promise, but it is a promise of when you seek me with all of your heart. It doesn't say if you seek me with all your heart, you might find me. Or if you seek me with all of your heart, I'll be hiding somewhere or I'll just be working in the background. It says you will seek me and find me. We have it right there. So every Christian that is clamoring and saying, ah, oh, the world just needs God. The world just needs a little bit more Christ. Well, seek him in your heart first. Because he says he'll show up. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. He said he will show up. So if you want to see him in this world, seek him here. And let the expression flow out of you. Let it not only change your heart, but the hearts of others. But again, you have to check and honestly seek. Uh, I, I pray constantly for my heart. I pray constantly for the hearts of others. I pray that we all get to a point where we understand that all of this means nothing if there's nothing dwelling inside. That it just becomes actions without a purpose and sets us up for failure. And if you guys don't mind right now, I'd actually just love to do a prayer with you guys. As we just pray for our own hearts, you guys could pray for mine too. Hey, I'll, I'll take it all. But prayer is important. It's necessary. And it's a way to start a time of reflection. Dear Lord, if I'm being honest with you, I carry so many wounds and brokenness and pain in my own heart, Lord. I don't check my heart as often as I should. I'm not honest about the things that are hardening my heart that I stay away from. I don't recognize the fact that I can be unwelcoming. Truthfully, I start going through the fruits of the spirits and I stop at like six of them. Lord, I, I just pray that you fill me. That I recognize that I'm loved so much by you that I can't help but to love other people. I pray that the Holy Spirit enters everything that I do. I pray that the Holy Spirit changes my perspective on people. that I'm able to lead with that first as opposed to my heart left up on its own. God, I, I don't want to miss it. I pray that you keep me dedicated to checking. That I stay dedicated to your word. 
I stay dedicated to walking with you in every decision. Because God, this is too important for me not to. Lord, I, I just pray for all of us together that we can continue to check our hearts in an honest and genuine way. I pray all of this in your name. Amen. All right. Mike. Thanks, Adam. Here. We're going to sing a song about our heart today, church. That was a great message, Admir. Really needed to hear that. This is my Let me try that again. This is my desire to honor church. I am so happy to be able to say hi to you this morning. One thing that is the most difficult for me during this time is hugging people. I'm missing hugs. So just please send those virtual hugs to me through the, through the screen today. And just, um, I'm happy to be worshiping with you, even if it's online. So at this time, I just wanted to do a few reminders. One is that your continued faithfulness with giving is so appreciated by those that we can help through our church. So please continue to do that as you can mail that in and go to our website to uh, give of your tithes. Um, the second thing is that if you need to pick me up during the week, we've got a couple of online ways to do that. 
Wednesdays, we have our prayer meeting at 7 p.m. on Zoom. And I just hope that you will join in on that as we have so much to pray for right now that we can come together as a church and do so together. Uh, and also, uh, Pastor Andy is continuing to give us these moments of hope on Thursday mornings. And you can also find those later in the week if you don't do it right at 8 a.m. in the morning when he posts. But this week, he talked to us about that light that we can each be. And that was a pick-me-up for me, and I know for all of us that watched it. So continue to see him online on Thursday mornings. And thirdly, uh, I am so wanting to call out to the kids and say, please join me this uh, today at 5 p.m. Today at 5, we're going to get on Zoom together, and we are going to read Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. It's the story about Mary and Martha, and together we're going to talk about how Jesus wants us to choose to focus on him instead of being busy or worrying, and I know there's some worry right now. So we're going to just talk about spending time with Jesus at the start of the day before we fill it with all these other things. So come, kids, families, help them get online, I hope. Five o'clock today on Zoom, come see Miss Jen and let's have some fun together doing children's church. Okay, Pastor Andy. All right, thank you, Jen. Thank you, Mike, for leading us in worship. Adam, that was a fantastic message. Friends, I know that we had some uh, problems with the feed during it. Um, apologize for that. We're sorry about that. But I would really encourage you, if you missed even just a minute of what Adam has shared, uh, go back and watch it again. Pay close attention to the questions he asked because those are some of the things that will rightly structure our heart as we seek to make a difference in this world. Friends, thanks so much for joining us in worship today. Um, next week we'll be online as well while we keep an eye on the numbers and see what's going on around us. So make sure you tune in there as well. But as we close, would you receive this benediction? May the Lord bless you and keep you. Wherever you are, may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and lift up his countenance to you. Go about your week in his peace and knowing that his presence is with you always. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Take care, everybody. God bless. Stay safe. Wear your mask. Have a great week. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.